Hey folks, Dan from DNN and Custom Creations. Uh, got another video I'm gonna do today. Uh, this is gonna be a machining video, not a uh, plasma table video. So if you're not interested in machining, yeah, just skip it. Um, got a customer that has asked me to try and fabricate him a swage block. Um, these are used for crimping uh, stainless cable to ends and then they're used in making fencing, these cable, stainless cable fencing. He's got one and uh, it has failed, it is broken. Uh, I tried to, to uh, weld it up a little bit to give him a little more life and it didn't hold up real well. So we're gonna, we're gonna actually try and make another one. Now, um, I have changed the design quite a bit because the one that was there, um, it, it had some weaknesses. And so uh, I'm gonna show you the design and then I'll show you the, uh, some of the fabrication, some of the machining to uh, try and do this. Now, I, I've never made a swage block before. Uh, uh, this is a little bit out of my realm. So fortunately I had something that I could kind of copy from uh, and uh, instead of trying to redesign it from, from ground zero. Because part of the problem uh, when you're swaging uh, knowing how much it has to crush the uh, ferrule in order to get, uh, you know, a good, uh, you know, tightness. I'm not sure, you know, I've looked through the machine's handbook, I've looked through a number of things, and I really haven't found anything to help me out. Uh, but fortunately, I had something I could try and copy from, so that's what I've done. Let me show you the design, uh, designed it up in Fusion 360, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, what the various pieces are, how it works, and uh, we'll go from there and then I'll, we'll start doing some machining. If I sound a little hoarse, I've got some kind of crud, um, and, uh, but uh, so if I start hacking, I'll, I'll stop the video until I'm fun at finished. All right, so let's take a look at the Fusion 360 file. Okay, uh, hopefully this is gonna show up. Sometimes the uh, use, look at something on a computer does uh, get some crazy lines in it and stuff for us, but let's see what we can do. All right, here's the bottom piece. Uh, this goes in an iron worker. It's a 50 ton iron worker. Uh, they can't set the limits. Uh, it just comes down until it finally you know, hits its max 50 ton. And then, you know, that's, that's swaged. So that's one of the reasons I think they're having a little problem with uh, breaking this thing is it's, it, it every time goes to 50 ton. And so what I'm gonna try and do is maximize the surface area that it comes down to contact so that while it swages, it has enough uh, surface area around it that uh, you know, it takes some of that force. So let's see if I can uh, rotate this thing a little bit so we can see this, this computer is uh, crappy and slow, but uh, all it does is run by plasma table. So um, there's top, the top piece, the bottom piece. Now the way I've drawn it up, I've actually made it a little different um, already, but uh, this will give us a general idea. Let me see if I can explode this thing and we'll see if we can look at the bits and pieces. All right, so um, let's get my cursor over here. This piece right here, that's, that's gonna be from A2 tool steel, uh, air hardened, and I will heat treat it. And this one on the bottom is also the same. So these are, these are basically pairs. Uh, this is just the top block that mounts in the uh, iron worker. And this is the base that uh, this thing mounts to that mounts in the bottom of that iron worker. Okay, here is the base block. Now, originally I was gonna have this made out of you know, two pieces and a center part. There'd be bolts that uh, you know, held these things together. And I thought, you know, why, why do that? Let's make this whole thing out of a single piece. So I, that's a 1018 steel. Uh, I have ground the top and the bottom so I make sure that I've uh, got a good reference edge. And then here is uh, the block that I have made already. Um, and what you see, this is a 3 uh, diameter. Then there's three quarter inch diameter. And then there's an eighth inch diameter. That's where the cable goes in. And the ferrule lays in here. It's crimped, and uh, hopefully that's do that's what's supposed to do. Now, 
you'll notice a couple little features. These little steps on the side give the ferrule some room to expand when it crimps. Uh, the original had those on there, and, and I think obviously they're pretty important. Uh, so um, I tried to uh, manufacture those in there. Now this is the one that fits in this block. Um, and it's got good support. I think it's probably a half thousandth clearance, maybe a thousandth. And then there's just the bolts that, uh, you know, bolt that thing down. So that is the bottom part. And um, I will show you machining this for the top part uh, and uh, uh, in here a little bit. And we'll work, uh, that will be the most of the, what the video is, is uh, machining that piece. All right, so I'll go set up. Okay, we're set up here, ready to start this uh, other swage block. And uh, I've got it in the vise. And you can see that I've already countersunk the holes and drilled the holes in the corner, but I'm actually gonna have to do a little bit more of that countersink because I've gotta take some uh, material off. So um, here's the drawing. And you can see that uh, I need to take off um, a quarter of an inch from the top surface of that. And right now it's a full inch, so it needs to be wind up three quarter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just find the, uh, the corner uh, and set that to zero. So I've got my edge finder in there. And where that uh, trips off, right there, I will set my X to zero. So I'll show you up here on the DRO. I'm going to set that X to zero, but that uh, edge finder is actually 200, uh, 200 thousandths of an inch. So that's really not the edge. So you got to come in for a, a hundred or a hundred thousandths. And now I'll reset that to zero and that is definitely the edge. Okay, so that's the edge in the X. We'll do that same thing in the Y. Again, that's not really zero, but I come in. So now our spindle is set at zero, zero on that top left corner. All right, so I got to run this thing as 850 RPM. So coming over to look at my, my cheat sheet here. Uh, so 850 RPM, I'm on the, I'm on the red line. So there's five, six, seven, eight, eight fifty. About let's do a go twenty-eight on the VFD. So there's the VFD. I'll go to twenty-eight, and that should give me eight hundred and fifty RPM. Actually, that's a conventional, I mean, uh, fine mill, and let me go conventional. I got some slop in this machine, and I don't know. This is uh, annealed A2, that's the material.
All right, let's see if we're anywhere close to what we're supposed to have. Well, here it is, quick measurement is 0.843. That's close enough, 0.85 for, in my book for what we're doing here. down to this other side and uh, we need to remove an inch on that end. Okay I finished the other side uh, off camera. Uh, nothing different except they went in for one inch from the end instead of at 25. So the next thing we need to do is cut those eighth inch slots uh, that are in the, shown in the drawing. Now, I have actually shown in the drawing, they go all the way across. And in fact, on the uh, original one that I'm trying to make kind of a copy of, they were all the way across. But in reality, they don't need to be. And uh, again, as I'm trying to, when these two pieces of swage block come together in this 50 ton press or iron worker, I'm trying to maximize the amount of surface area so that when they come together, that's kind of, uh, you know, ab absorbed in a larger surface area because I think the damage, the, the original dye in there, uh, swage uh, dyes, is due to, uh, you know, just the amount of uh, force that that's under. I don't think 50 tons is required to do the swage, but that's what they're using uh, to make this. So, and, and again, they can't limit uh, how far they come together. There's just a full stroke. And so um, it's taken 50 tons every time it comes together. So what I've done instead of going all the way across, here's one that I've already done. And you can see that the slots are not all the way across and uh, they're you know about an inch. So half an inch on, uh, from the center on each side. And this is what I want to try to do. Okay, we're uh, on center line and just touched off. So I'm gonna go 25 thousandths. Get a little juice on it. And then I'm gonna go um, half inch in each direction. Now that I've gone one full length, I'll go another plunge another 25,000.
and then go the full length of that slot. I'm running this uh, at uh, <clears throat> 3200 RPM. All right, got all four of those slots cut. Uh, didn't bust a little eighth inch cutter, so pretty happy. Again, I uh, don't know, I could have probably gone twice as fast, but wasn't, wasn't ready to take the risk. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go down that center line and cut the uh, hemispheres are actually the you know the what's going to hold the ferrule in place when it uh, is crimped so let's look at the drawing I'm back this off a little bit and uh, let's take a look so um, we can see that this top one this first one on the left hand side is where the um, the cable goes and uh, that's, a, I guess, a, a 3 16 cable. So that uh, slot needs to be, uh, you know, cut half of a 3 16 Then the next three are a quarter inch. And then the final one down on the bottom, the 0 0.313, that's actually 0.3125, that's 5 16 So the uh, first thing I'm going to do is set up to do the, um, the eighth inch slot, or I mean the, uh, the 3 16 inch slot, that first one on the far left side. All right, I'll bring you back. Uh, just one point out uh, to folks that, that might have a question. I'm using these cutters that I got from uh, Lakeshore Carbide. I've not used them before, but uh, folks that I um, have a lot of respect for, like the folks at NYC, CNC, and some of the others, uh, they're using uh, cutters from Lakeshore Carbide, and uh, so I thought I'd give them a chance. And uh, so far, I'm mean, real happy with them, but then again, I'm not real experienced, so not uh, sure I know whether they're good or not. The uh, other thing is, I am getting a, um, a CNC mill from uh, Langmire Systems, it's an MR1, uh, it's supposed to come, I think, in April, and so I will be uh, buying a, a number of these from Lakeshore Carbide. Uh, in the different sizes to use in that. So let's, uh, let's get these in and, and get these cut. Okay, got that uh, 3 16 uh, ball end mill uh, in the uh, spindle. And the uh, speeds and feeds says that uh, for that carbide cutter in that tool steel, I should be turning this thing at about 2100 RPM. So I've got that set. What I intend to do is to touch off and then actually lower the that uh, down half of that 316th, which is, you know, 0 0.09, 375. I'll actually go probably about uh, 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.096, make that a little bit deeper uh, than exactly the 316th uh, so that that cable doesn't have to be, you know, exactly. All that really is is a place to give the cable a reference. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly the thickness of the cable, which is, you know, being a stranded stainless cables, not exactly uh, round anyway. So let's touch this thing off and go down. I uh, bring that Z axis up uh, uh, point, point 0.9, let's go point 0.95, point 0.095, sorry. All right, there's touch off. Now, there, 0 0.095. 
And let's see what this thing will do. I'm actually going to go into the next slot a little bit to make sure I've got a full cut because the next slot's going to be cut deeper than that anyway, so it should make a difference. All right, there's the first slot. Sure, I can get you in close to that, but looks uh, looks as expected. All right, now I'm gonna switch the uh, cutter out for a quarter inch cutter, and that's what will be used in the next uh, three slots. All right, we got a quarter inch in there. Um, the uh, speeds and feeds chart tells me I'm supposed to run this at 1600 RPM. Got that set. I'll again touch off and then I'm going to make a, a on that touch off I'm going to go full pass all the way to the right hand side and then I'm going to start actually cutting uh, from the left hand uh, from the right hand side going left sorry about that so I'm going to move it all the way to the right hand side and then start cutting back to the left and I will go probably half the depth <clears throat> I'll take that in two steps uh, and um, I can I can start on the left hand side because the first slot is actually going to be five sixteenths. So um, I won't by cutting that uh, you know half of that quarter inch, so you know a point eighth of an inch deep uh, slot in there won't mess up that first slot. I think I, you understand what I mean. But let's uh, let's make this happen. I'm gonna first pass and make it uh, seventy thousand. Neat. Something must be moving here a little bit because that first slot is deeper than the rest. Uh, I need to make sure that I've tightened down that collet good enough. Uh, so let me do that. I'll bring it back. Okay, so either the collet was a little bit loose or the uh, spindle lock was not quite tight. So uh, let's make that another pass at 70,000. I'm going to start out by going to 130. We're right now we're at 72. All right, let's see.
Okay, um, we've made that pass. And so the last thing to do is put a 5 16 uh, ball nose in there and do this last slide at 5 16 which is the, board, the diameter of the uh, ferrule that's gonna get crimped. So I'll get set up and bring it back. Okay, we got the uh, 5 16 uh, ball nose in there. <clears throat> um, says I'm supposed to be running it at uh, 1280 RPM. Sitting to zero, let me set the Z. I've already cut quarter of an inch, so I think I can make the full cut. So 156 thousandths, there's a hundred, actually 160 thousandths, isn't it? 0.16. All right, let's see what we can do here. See how bad we're gonna mess this thing up. <laughs> you know what? I'm paranoid. I'm going half of that. I'm going to go 80 thousandths and uh, see what it looks like and then uh, take the final cut. That all looked pretty good. Let's go the full amount now. 160,000. I gotta be careful how far I go in. I want a full hemi of that, but I don't want to cut into the next slot. I only have an eighth of an inch, so I'm just going to barely creep over there. Let's see if we accomplished anything we want. Hopefully we're in good shape. That's uh, see if that ferrule fits in there. Feels pretty good. That's what we're looking for. Okay, now I said that was going to be it. That was the last operation, but in fact, that's not. Uh, okay. If you remember these uh, slots that were cut in here to give the uh, crimp a little bit of relief, um, I need to do that uh, on this one. So let me get set up for that. I'm using an eighth inch cutter, but with a 20 thousandths uh, radius on the end so that it's not as sharp. So let me get that set up and I'll bring it back. Okay, we've got this, uh, the cutter in to do this last operation, <clears throat> which is to cut the slots for the, uh, the crimp to actually expand into. And like I mentioned, I'm using an eighth inch diameter cutter, but it's got a 20 thousandths quarter um, corner radius. And the reason being is when I cut that slot, I want to have a little bit of a corner radius on there uh, so that it uh, doesn't create an a area for you know, cracks to start. Um, again, I'm come down to touch off and then I'm going to go 50,000 steep. So it'll, that slot will actually be 50,000 deep and 50,000 uh, wide or into or away from that corner uh, of the radius. All right, uh, let's see, we're back up. Oh, I got to do a, got to remember what the cut speed is supposed to be. Let me do it real quick. So that is uh, 400 divided by 0 0.125, 3200, yeah, same thing as I ran that eighth inch last time. So 3200, let me see what my VFD is set for to do that. Uh, 3200 is 53. You can't see this, but I'm just uh, turning my VFD to give me the right uh, RPM. All right, so 53. So that should be 3200 RPM. All right, and uh, these slots are only on the uh, quarter inch 
um, hemis because that's where the crimp occurs. So that's the only place it needs to be. All right, let's see where I'm sitting at right now. I'll come till I touch off. I'm going to come down and do this uh, in, a, in a full slot, so 50 thousandths. Now, the way I'm set up right now is a climb cut. I don't know if I want to do that, so I'm actually going to go to the other side, so I'm conventional milling. So I need to go uh, negative 0.1124 to get on that other side. Thank you. That should be the last part of that operation. Um, I need to, um, you know, take a nice, you know, file and and uh, clean up the edges, take off the burrs and the sharp edges and stuff like that. All right. There's two dies. <clears throat> There's a three sixteenth uh, ferrule. Uh, the cable go comes in this end that sits in there like that, can't go any farther up. The cable slides all the way up into the ferrule and then the crimp occurs. And you can see that that crimps, if I had to guess, uh, there's probably um, an eighth of an inch in between those two blocks. So when they come down, they close, uh, they close up into that, under that ferrule. And where it crimps then, what comes out the sides, uh, should expand into these little relief slots. We will next are going to have to harden this. This is A2 steel, so I'm going to have to figure out what the heat treat schedule is supposed to be, and for um, you know things like dies and stamps and that kind of thing, I'll have to figure out when and what to temper it to. 
So that's my next challenge after I deburr and get this thing ready to go.